Okay, so now we look at these selective reabsorptions in the proximal convoluted tubule or commonly known as PCT. Okay, so if you look at the structure of the cells here, if you look at the structure of the cells, so this cell is known as the epithelium. Okay, epithelium of P, they are epithelium cells. So we call it PCP epithelial cells or PCP epithelium. So this part is the filtrate, means that it's a lumen of the tubule. We have the tissue fluids, the tissue fluids, and we do have the capillary, and this capillary is known as a peritubular capillary. Peri means near, eh? near to the tubule, the capillary near the tubule. So this is what we call as the peritubular capillary. So selective reabsorption takes place when the substances they move across the wall of the tubule. So this is wall the tubule into the associated peritubular capillary networks. So the most of the reabsorption especially, especially take place at this proximal convoluted tubule known as PCD. So what is the mechanism? Okay, what is the mechanism? This is very important. A lot of time question asked in the ESA, also in the structure question, what is the mechanism? So this mechanism actually involves the in direct active transport similar to the translocation that we have learned in the transport in plants, okay, where you want to translocate okay, the, uh, or to, to actively load the sucrose into the sieve element. So similar idea. So what we're going to do here is now follow the process. Follow the process. I'm going to label one by two, three. So first process, number one, ATP. Okay, it's an active transport. Okay, so ATP going to phosphorylate the sodium potassium pump here. So, okay, this is a sodium potassium pump. Okay. Sodium potassium pump. So, sodium potassium pump actively pump out three sodium ion, take in two potassium ion. Can you see that again, guys? Take in three sodium ion. Okay. I said they pump out three sodium ion, take in two potassium ion. So sodium ion now move out from the cells or PCP cells into the tissue fluids and from tissue fluid enter into the capillary. So the concentration of the sodium ion inside the PCP cells definitely low now. Okay. So first, sodium ion out. So therefore, concentrations of the sodium ion in the cell is low. Concentration of the sodium ion in the lumen is high. Can I see that? Okay, so sodium ion, now the second process here. Oh, sorry. What is the second process? Second process actually is involve co transport of what? Second process, because the concentrations of the sodium ion inside the cell is low, concentration of the sodium ion inside the filtrate is high, sodium ion now diffuse back by faster diffusion, but term and condition, they cannot move alone. So they bind to the, uh, the, the abiding sites of the co-transporter, so we have a different, different kind of co-transporter. The co-transporter co-transport sodium ion and glucose or co-transporter co-transport the sodium ion the amino acid or some vitamin. Are you clear? We have 20 types of amino acid, right? So we have 20 types that's special for each kind of amino acid. So sodium ion bind, glucose bind. We use the glucose as our uh, model, sodium ion bind. Glucose bind. So sodium ion enter into the PCD cell now by facilitated diffusion down the sodium ion concentration gradient. Okay, again, sir, again, sir. Sodium ions bind to the uh, co transporter, the binding site. Glucose have to bind. So when both of them bind ready, then sodium ion now can enter into the PCD cells by facilitated diffusion down the concentration gradient. Because why? Sodium ion inside is low. Filtrate, high. So therefore, sodium ion enter. Glucose, how about glucose? 
So glucose actually co-transported, okay, glucose molecule is co-transported into the PCT cells. So it, glucose enter by facilitated diffusion also, but if this is the normal facilitated diffusion, what will happen? You're going to reach the dynamic equilibrium. You try to imagine if just normal facilitated diffusion, you're going to reach the dynamic equilibrium, which is not allowed. Okay, which is not allowed. Here, we want to absorb completely. In the healthy person, we want to absorb completely. So how? Depend on the sodium ion. So as long as we have the sodium ion to enter from the filtrate into the cells, it will going to bring the glucose in. Are you clear? So glucose actually at the end, you can see that glucose enter by facilitated diffusion, but against the concentration gradient. So it means that I don't care how much glucose inside, as long as we have the sodium ion, sodium ion will be able to co-transport the glucose into the cells. So again, because no ATP involved directly here, cry not, no ATP involved directly here. So the process is termed as the facilitated diffusion. But make sure that you mentioned against the concentration gradient, okay? Against the glucose concentration gradient. So amino acid, some ions and vitamins, yes, through this process. Are you clear? Okay. Yeah? Now, when you remove the solute, try to imagine, you remove the sodium ion from the filtrate, you remove the glucose, you remove the amino acid ions and vitamins, the water-soluble vitamins, into the cells. So it means that filtrate now, the so third process involves water molecule. Okay. Why is it third process here? Means, now look at this. Because we remove the sodium ion, we remove the glucose, we remove the amino acid, we remove the ions and vitamin. So it means that water potential in the filtrate actually become higher, right? Less solute. So water potential inside the filtrate actually is higher. And in accumulation of the ion inside the cells, right not? Okay, accumulated ions and solutes. So water potential is low now. So by osmosis, now water molecule now enter into the cells. Again, it's not straight away enter this way. They have to enter through the aquaporins. Yeah? Water channel. So this is how the water molecule will be reabsorbed back through the water channel and then enter into the peritubular capillary. So how we reabsorb back the water. So it's a passive process due to what? Due to the reabsorption of the solute creates the water potential gradient where water potential is high inside the filtrate, water potential is low inside the cells. So therefore, water molecule enter. Okay, water molecule enter from the filtrates all the way into the peritubular capillary by osmosis down the water potential gradient. Are you clear? Okay, uh, now, next thing, the fourth. Some, one very, very uh, special case, urea. Urea is something like we don't want to reabsorb back. It's a waste particle. It's a waste product that we want to excrete out. But why reabsorption actually take place? Then we have to look at this now. If you look at the formula for concentration, concentration actually equal to the mass over volume. Cranot. Concentration is the number of particles over volume. Right? over volume, correct or not? So what's so special in this case is because we reabsorb back the water, water molecule is reabsorbed back, so therefore volume decrease. Correct or not? Volume of the filtrate decrease because water, 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 we move in. So urea concentration now increase. And urea is a particle where, okay, the urea, small particle, right? relatively small compared to glucose, amino acid, they are small. So when the concentration is so high, until the urea now can diffuse, 
across the phospholipid bilayer and reabsorb back. We have no way to control it. About 50%, around 50% of the urea will be reabsorbed back. Are you clear? But it's not something like we want to reabsorb back, but no choice because we reabsorb back the water molecule, making the concentration of urea increases. So it means that the concentration of urea is so high until they will be able to diffuse across. If, okay, even though they are hydrophilic, but this still can be able to cross the phospholipid bilayer and diffuse into the paratubular capillary, about 50%. But it doesn't matter because we do know that urea are relatively non-toxic. When they are relatively non-toxic, so means that, never mind, this round, I cannot excrete you out. Next round. Lah. Okay, peritubular capillary all the way, enter into the renal vein, from the renal vein, enter into the vena cava, go into the heart, go into the lung, and blah, blah, blah. Come back to kidney again. We will one day, one day, we will be able to excrete out this urea. Are you clear? So about 50% of the urea will be reabsorbed back by diffusion, which we have no control because of the reabsorptions of the water molecule, making the urea concentration is so high until urea now, very, very steep concentration gradient is created. Urea will be able to diffuse across this uh, phospholipid bilayer and reabsorb back, okay? Other ions, some of the ions actually will be able to pass through this area called tight junction. Okay, so for example, the chlorides and sometimes potassium ion, they will be able, but this one actually not in our syllabus, so just ignore. Okay, just ignore about chloride ions. Okay, so involved in our syllabus, four processes. I repeat again here. First process, active transport. ATP phosphorylates the sodium potassium pump. Constantly pump out three sodium ion, take in two potassium ion. So, because the sodium ion move out of the PCT cell, so making the concentration of the sodium ion inside the PCT cell is low, concentration of the sodium ion in the filtrate is high, so sodium ion now can move from the filtrate into the PCD cells. But term and conditions, when the sodium ion want to enter, they have to bring it together with the other nutrients, for example, glucose, amino acid, some other ions, and as well as the vitamin. So this process is by co-transport system. So sodium ions will move in by facilitated diffusion, down the concentration gradient because we know that inside is low, outside is high, sodium ions concentration. But for glucose, amino acid, and vitamins, they will enter inside because we don't want to waste those nutrients. We want to fully reabsorb them back under healthy conditions. Therefore, therefore, the process is by facilitated diffusion because no ATP involved here. Okay by facilitated diffusion, but against the concentration gradients. Are you clear? So at the end, no glucose inside. We have high glucose and glucose now can diffuse or facilitated diffusion take place and go into the peritubular capillary. This is how we reabsorb back the nutrient. So it means that in the loop of Henle, you won't see any glucose anymore. We won't see any amino acid anymore because if we can't absorb them back, no way for us to reabsorb them back in the loop of Henle, DCT, and collecting that because we don't have this special coal transporter to bring them back. Okay, because of the removal of the sodium ions, removal of the glucose, amino acid, and water soluble nutrients and solutes from the filtrates, therefore, water potential of the filtrate is higher compared to the water potential inside the cells and the paratubular capillary. Therefore, water molecule now can be reabsorbed back by osmosis down the water potential gradient. Because of the reabsorption of the water molecule, there is a decrease in the volume, making the urea concentration is high. So urea will be reabsorbed back as well. About 50% of urea. Why 50%? Because is the diffusion. So it means that it will achieve what we call the dynamic 
equilibrium. So that's four fifty percent will be reabsorbed back, but doesn't matter because urea is relatively non toxic. Okay? Urea is relatively non toxic. We wait for the second round. Okay. So you can try to answer the questions here. Okay. So I go uh, go through it slowly so you can check your answer later. Okay, so now we look at the activity 18.14. Okay, highlight these activities because again, question always asks about the adaptations. Okay, we have four adaptations here. Okay, now what are the adaptations? If you look at the process, from the process here, four adaptations are very important. First, we need ATP. So means that PCT cells will be will have high number of mitochondria. This is the first adaptation. They must have high okay, number of mitochondria first. Second, because we want to reabsorb so many kinds of the nutrient, means that we need to increase the surface area. So how to increase the surface area for reabsorption? If you look at the lumens of the PCT, and the PCT cells, you will realize that PCT cells actually have what we call the microvilli. So this is called microvilli, or singular microvillus. So it's the infolding, eh, something like several protrusions Okay, or projection in this case to increase the surface area. Okay, why? Because when we have higher surface area, we can incorporate more co-transporter. Correct or not? We can have more co-transporter so that increase the rate of the reabsorption. Are you clear? So this is the second adaptation. So they have microvilli that face the lumens of the PCT, okay? Third, because we want to make sure that reabsorption takes place, it's a selective reabsorption. So between the cells, we have this, what we call a tight junction. So this tight junction makes sure that there is no gap Okay, the tight junction here to make sure that there is no gap between the cells. Because if there is a gap between the cells, what will happen? Okay, the, the, the uric acid also can flow through, waste also can flow through, okay? Our drug, toxic substances also can flow through, okay? Because that is a tight junction, right? But in this case, in the PCT, you have no gap in between. That is a very, very tight junction, which actually makes sure that any particle yet we want to reabsorb back is through the cells. Are you clear? It's go, they are going through this, they are going through the cells, not from the gap. Because this gap, we won't be able to stop the particles. Okay? Now this tight junction definitely allow a particular Ions, for example, cry ions, a small ions, they can pass through, but those waste products, for example, uric acid, creatinine, no way for them to pass through because the presence of the tight junctions. This is number three uh, adaptation. Number four adaptation, definitely presence of the specific co-transporter. No point, you increase the surface area, no point you have a lot of mitochondria, no point you have a tight junction, but no specific co-transport protein. Are you clear? So this is number four. Okay, uh, in AC questions, quite a number of years, okay, AC question asks about these adaptations of the epithelial cells of the proximal, uh, the PCT or proximal convertibules for selective reabsorption. So first, 
presence of microvilli in okay increase surface area for what okay of the membrane uh, membrane facing the lumens to accommodate some more coal transporter so therefore we can increase the rate of selective reabsorption second the presence of the large number of mitochondria for what okay to synthesize atp to phosphorylate the sodium potassium pump protein in the membrane facing the blood capillary or peritubular capillary. Number third, okay, uh, so number three, uh, the third one, the presence of the tight junctions that hold adjacent cells together so that fluid cannot pass through between the cells. Therefore, all substances that are reabsorbed must go through the cells. So we can do the selections, right? In this case, oh, glucose, yes, can. Oh, yeah. Uh, uric acid no so we can do the selective reabsorption okay with the presence of this tight junction and number four the presence of the specific core transport proteins in the membrane facing the lumen to allow a particular solute to be reabsorbed into the pct cells not all particle we're going to reabsorb them back but a specific okay a specific uh what could these uh substances or specific uh, solutes that we're going to reabsorb them back. Okay, uh, so highlights uh, these two very important two activities in the essay questions always come out. Okay, asking us to write the mechanism as well as okay, uh, we we'll talk about this. What are the adaptation of the cells that allows the PCP to carry out the function right, for the selective reabsorptions? Okay. Now next. So urea acid and creatinine. So the other ways, because we don't have a specific transport protein to transport them. What is the uh, the, the reason we uh, we want to transport them back? Right, because they are a waste product. Okay. So creatinine is actively secreted also by the cells of the PCT into the lumen through the process of the tubular secretion. So the reabsorption of water molecules and solutes from the filtrates in the proximal corner tubules greatly reduce the volume of the liquid remaining. So now the one that enter the loop of Henle is about 45 cm cube. Okay, 45 cm cube per minute or the filtrate now enter in the loop of Henle. So basically, 1 to 5 cm cube per minute equivalents to 80, 180 liter. But now, they enter into the PCT. So loop of Henle, so 45 cm cube per minute. So roughly about how many, how much? Can okay, calculate? So 45. So roughly about 65, okay, roughly about 64.8 liter of the fluids that actually enter into the loop of Henle. They consider very high, 68 liter, 64 liter. So with the 64 liter means that we have to continue to reabsorb back the water. But always remember, if you look at 180 liter of the fluid enter into the PCT, so how much actually PCT reabsorb back? If you calculate 180, you minus out 64. 180 minus out 64.8 liter, you're going to have, okay, 115 liter. 115.2 liter of the fluid have been reabsorbed back at the PCT. Okay, do a simple calculation here. Out of 180 liter, our PCT help us to reabsorb 115.2 okay, liter of the fluid in PCT. So making PCT is a major reabsorption of the water. Are you clear? Students always confuse later when we talk about the loop of Henle, we talk about DCT, we talk about the collecting duct, because three of them major function is to reabsorb water molecule, not other uh, solutes. Okay, for example, not the glucose, not amino acid. So students always think that, oh, we always think that, oh, because water reabsorb a lot in the loop of Henle, a lot in the collecting duct, so making them uh, higher 
parts that actually are absorb water molecule, which is wrong because PCT alone absorb back one one five point two liter. The remaining one only sixty four point eight liter. Are you clear? Okay, huh? So when the question asks which parts of the nephron have the highest rate of reabsorptions of the water molecules, the answer is PCT. Okay, which is PCT with per day roughly about 115.2 liter of the fluid have been reabsorbed back. Okay, so any more questions, guys? <laughs>